Well, congratulations. It's nice to not see you covered in blood. How does yeah, it no. feel? No, it feels good. It's always good to be up here after the fight. But uh, definitely it was, uh, caught me at the end. You know, whenever I, um, when we came in, so like we were kind of striking a little bit. And then uh, whenever I threw, I think I threw like a jab and he like level changed, like he was going to come in for a takedown, which I thought that he would be looking to get the fight to the ground because uh, towards the end, he was like, he seemed like he was pretty confident staying on the ground. So when he level changed, I thought it was like a real takedown shot, like he was shooting. And then he came back up and I thought it was the back of his head that hit me uh, originally. And then whenever I landed and I had like seat belt, like I had his back locked up, I realized that it was his elbow, but I had his back locked up and I thought that I would sink that choke in, but uh, he, he just did such a good job with his defense. Was it hard to do all that after with all the blood? I mean, it must have been slippery and getting all your... Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, it was, it's always kind of like weird when you have your own blood in there. It's like uh, you smell it and like, it, like, you know, I try to tell people about like the no fans and stuff like that. It's so weird when you don't have like a, a whole arena, like making a bunch of noise. Cause like uh, I could hear, like whenever it hit me, like I could hear him breathing and I could see that he saw that I was bleeding, I could hear the referee talking to me, and like you hear my coach and his coach talking, and it's like, it's such a weird feeling, and then I see my blood squirting out, like, you know, two or three inches, it, like it hit, it hit an artery, or so it's not hit it's something good, and uh, it was squirting, like, really good, and it was, you know, just coming out the whole time, so uh, it was a steady, steady stream of blood, and I could just smell it, and it's, you know, it's always kind of weird, it doesn't really freak me out anymore, it's just like, it's just weird. It's not normal to get hit in the face and uh, to bleed, <laughs> like have your own blood just all over someone. It's kind of like, it's, you know, it's nuts. Was there any fear that it would get stopped because of all the blood? I, no, I think it just, it like pinpoint, it hit like a perfect artery, like it hit something in there where it was bleeding good, but the cut, like it's like long superficial cut, but it's not like deep all the way through. It's only deep in the middle. So it was like, I think it was like three, stitches underneath and then the rest of them were like on the top so it was deep because it hit the you know hit something but uh it wasn't like a doctor stoppage or anything i could it was coming down the side of my eye i could feel that it was like hit my eyebrow and coming off the side it wasn't in my it wasn't in my eye so or i don't think i don't know maybe it was it didn't look like it. i mean it looked yeah. like it was going straight out to us but <laughs> yeah no it, it when i i i had like uh, I had C belt, or I had like uh, his neck, almost like he ran like a choke, and I had this hand underneath his armpit. And when I was squeezing to like set in the choke, every time I squeezed, the blood would kind of come out a little further. And it was like, you know, at that point, me and him were actually talking there. He was like, uh, he's like, he's like, man, are you okay? <laughs> he's like, are you good? Can you keep fighting? And he was like, you know, it was like, uh, I don't know how long. It wasn't that much time left whenever I had his back like that. And so, uh, it was kind of one of those things where we both kind of knew like whatever was going to happen was going to be in the judge's hands at that point because uh, I, you know, I was trying to set positions and he just had just enough uh, defensive counters to like stop me from, you know, I was trying to lock in legs and, and I couldn't lock in legs and the choke or I, I would lock in the choke and I couldn't lock in my hooks. So he was doing a good job defending one or the other, and I could never lock up a you know submission position, you know just a dominant position to land strikes or to go for a submission. Um, when he was saying, "Are you okay?" was that like a genuine or was he no? I mean, shocking. Y yes and no. I mean, I think it was like uh, you know it wasn't there's no genuine. Like you're not gonna you don't care. I mean you care whatever maybe a little bit, but like. Uh, it was more like he was kind of like just jabbing at me, just, you know, talking smack, but it wasn't anything crazy. He was just like, uh, he, we were, he saw me looking at him because I saw that he saw I was bleeding. And so I looked at him and like, we, like, he like looked back and we made like somewhat of eye contact and then he said that. And so it was, you know, it was just real chill. It wasn't anything crazy, but yeah, no, it wasn't genuine. And you had a lengthy layoff. Um, do, was there any worry that you might not get back? And I mean, it feel kind of with the canceled fight and you know all that stuff. No, I mean it, it is what it is. Like you, uh, you got to think about how hard we train uh, to get ready for these fights, and it's pretty normal to go into a fight and get banged up. And I've been in, I've been in fights where I've had uh, some torn cartilage in my ribs. I've broken toes. I've broken my hand. I've broken my fingers. Uh, hurt my back and lifting and just doing. Like you train so much, you do all these different things. So like when you come into the fight, you're always gonna be a little banged up. But um, you know, I was a week before the fight, I had a new opponent, which was a completely different game plan. I had to have really good wrestling for that fight. 
And um, it was like I took someone down and I landed on my shoulder and I had like a grade one separation. So it was just really painful. It wasn't anything tore. And so I couldn't dig an underhook very good and I couldn't be in on, like, on a single and someone wizard on me. Like they were defending the single, then it hurt really bad. So my coach was like, hey, you know, we just need to, we need to pull out this fight. We don't want to go. Because I've been in so many fights where I've went into and been really banged up and just never say a word about it. And I think all fighters are like that. And um, that fight was just really important for me to get the win. And, um, you know, we just didn't feel comfortable going into um, 100%, you know, you know, we weren't, I wasn't 100%, so. Was there anything that surprised you about your opponent? Um, yeah, because, uh, like, uh, you know, everybody knows that I go to the ground a lot. And, um, you know, before this fight, I was 18 and four, and I had 17 finishes. And so uh, me getting someone to the ground usually means I get a finish. And um, that's what I was looking to do with him. I know he's been doing jiu-jitsu for a while. And um, I know he's got some tricky stuff on his feet. So, you know, I was definitely, my goal or my game plan was to get him to the ground and get a finish. And, um, you know, I was really wanting to be that guy that, that finished him on the ground. I thought I would because I saw a lot of uh, defensive positions where he was going with other people and they had submissions locked up, but they just didn't finish. So um, I was looking for a finish and, you know, it just didn't happen. But he was, he was really good about defending uh, me getting my hooks in or me getting, like I was saying, like getting one or the other. He was defending the choke or defending the position really well. Was there any worry going into the, the scorecards that you maybe, you know, you never know? You never know. I, that's why I always go for finish because, uh, you know, you don't know what these guys are looking at. You don't know what their backgrounds are, like what they enjoy watching because at the end of the day, they're still fans. They, they, they love being around the sport or they wouldn't be choosing this job, you know. So, like, them sitting there at the table, they do have a job to do, but they're also uh, deep down inside, they're still fans. And I think that's the same with all the referees and coaches and everybody like at some point everybody has love for the sport so the you know you never know how the judges see the fight and how they want to see the fight so I always look for finishes and I know you got to let that cut heal up but when you want to get back in there um you know I'm always game I'm always training hard um my weight's always pretty good so I'm like I'm ready to fight you know soon and I'll definitely make that call I'll talk to my coaches I'm back there I'm about to head over to the PI right now and get some um, work in the cold plunge and just try to recover as quick as I can, try to get my legs underneath me. Um, you know, I don't know what happened, but my legs were, they got real heavy towards the end of the first. So he did hit me with a couple of calf kicks, but my, like my quads and my, all my legs, I could just feel the blood flow just like slow down. So I'm not really sure what's going on, but I just need to recover my legs and I'll get back at it as soon as I can. And last question, do you have an opponent in mind? Uh, no, I'm always game to fight anyone, like literally anyone in my weight class or 55. You know, I'm always game to fight. And, um, you know, I walk around heavy enough to take a short notice at 55 too. So um, who knows? I'm just ready to fight. And I know Sean knows that. And my manager and my coach know that. So I'll be, I'll be back in the gym as soon as I'm healthy. And I'll be ready to go as soon as I can. Thank you. I think we're always so fascinated when to make it take a cut like that and, and, and fight through it and let alone make it on it and go ahead and win. What, at what point after you took the shot and then you take his back, did you even realize at first and you know that, that he even cut you open and how long till, till you realized it and were you a little surprised when you, when you first saw the blood starting to come out? Yeah, no, I realized it is uh, as soon as I um, locked up the position on his back, whenever I had that like seatbelt position, I'll have to go back and watch it. But I think I had um, his head and my head on the uh, opposite side. And so I wasn't in the best position to like throw a hook in or to like um, secure the position, but I knew I had seatbelt and I always use seatbelt to like keep someone's back and try to get my lower body in position. So. When I had his back and I had that seatbelt position, I knew I was safe, but then I realized that I could feel the warmth. You feel that warm blood coming down. And then I actually, uh, I breathed out really heavy through my mouth and I spit blood. I didn't have it in my mouth, but it like yeah, yeah. came down my lips and then it spit out. And so whenever I saw that, I was like, okay, I'm the one cut, not him. Cause I, I didn't, I knew I didn't land anything, but I thought the back of his head hit me. And I thought it was actually in the, in the middle of my forehead. So. I was happy to, you know, realize it was on the outside of my eye. So, sure, and it seemed like I couldn't quite tell if at during the the weigh-ins and even the beginning of the night was there heat between the two, or was this just typical fight week sort of stuff? You know, I, I mean, it's whatever. Like, he, you know, it, it was kind of like, a, you know, 
he it's just typical stuff he he did an interview that had like 20 views on it on youtube and i just came across it one day and uh it said like you know i'm gonna look to knock him out you know he's got no hands he got beat by kevin aguilar but i'm like man that was like eight years ago whenever i just got released from the ufc because i all i was was a wrestler so whenever he said that, I was like, okay, let, you know, let's let's stay on the feet. Let's you know see what see what you got there. And um, you know, it was definitely there's a little bit, but it wasn't. I mean, it's nothing. It's squash. It's nothing like. I mean, I will never carry. I won't ever speak his name again. Probably, you know, I won't ever have to. But I'm looking to get in and, and fight as soon as I can. I want I want top 20 guys. I don't want to fight um, anybody above me. But you know, you're coming off a loss. Um, something you got to do is just step up and. When they give you a fight, you got to take it. And you know, I was ready to fight him for sure. I had his name on a on a post-it note. Maybe I'll uh, I'll find that picture. But it's like a couple months back. Uh, I was telling my coaches and my my manager. I was like, hey, you know, like here's top, here's ten guys. Here's twenty guys. Like I'll fight anybody in my weight class. And I was just kind of like writing it out because that's what I like to use post-it notes a lot for all my stuff. And that's I had his name on a post-it note. I think the, the commentary said that they thought that you had a, when, they, when you were asked about a call out and you didn't really initially say anything, I think the commentary said that, that they thought that you had Darren Elkins on a post-it note. I did, yeah, I did. Because like what I do is I train every day and my cardio is always really good and then my, um, my weight's always good. So I'm like, I'm game to fight short notice fights. So I, I would much rather take a fight on three or four week notice or two week notice than have a full eight to 10 week camp. Like it just gets drawn out, you get banged up more. It's like you mentally break down you know, more when you have a longer camp. I don't like long camps. I train every day. So um, you know, I want short notice fights. I don't want you know these long drawn out camps. And uh, I had his name on there. I had uh, Bryce Mitchell if he had a fight and he had his opponent fell out. You know, it's like I can't, you know, be a, a jackass and call out someone in the top five or top ten, you know, like right off the bat. But I'm game to fight any of these guys and I know I can hang with a lot of people on the ground for sure. And there's definitely things I gotta work work with on my feet and that's what I've been really game planning with my coach Charles Bird. And um, you know, you saw some kicks tonight, but I'm definitely trying to be more comfortable, be more well rounded and um, that's it. You know, just keep keep evolving. And last thing, and it kind of goes with the evolving, because I know you want to go over to the PI and take care of that eye. Yeah. You know, you, you mentioned Sean, Shelby, and you mentioned the guys, and you said you were grateful for them to giving you a shot again. Yep. Because I think a lot of people may forget, you know, your first stint with the UFC was back in 2014, I yep. believe. How different is you these days with the mentality, the skill set, everything, of what we see from you now as opposed to the Damon Jackson we saw back then? I've always had a good mentality. I've always uh, known that I, this is what I wanted to do. You know, I've been since seventh grade. I literally started wrestling. Um, I did make the A team in basketball. So I, I went over to the wrestling mats and I just loved it instantly. My uncle was like a big UFC fan back when it was like bare knuckle, you know, just crazy. And so like I wasn't even allowed to watch it, but I knew instantly that's what I wanted to do. So I wanted to go to college be an All-American and just so I could get in the UFC. And so like I set that goal out a long time ago and then I did that. And when I made it into the UFC, I was, I this guy right over here, um, you know, he was, uh, he was one of my teammates and uh, I was like, hey man, I'm gonna take an amateur fight here in three weeks, will you hold pads for me? And I bought these title uh, Muay Thai pads off online, spent like all the money I had, like I spent like $100 on pads and I never even kicked pads they were hard as a rock and I had no clue what I was doing. He was holding pads for me. My wife was holding pads. She was here tonight. So it's like, um, you know, this is something I wanted to do from, from a long time ago. So it's, uh, you know, going through that and making it out of college. And then um, I made it into the UFC a year and a half after I turned pro. So like soon as, soon as, as soon as I was done with that semester, I started training for a fight. I had my first pro debut. And then I went through and I had nine fights in it less than a year and a half. And I made it into the UFC. I beat Leonard Garcia, made it into the UFC, and I was, you know, nothing but a wrestler. And uh, there was a guy from Brazil, um, I think it's from, uh, maybe, I don't know where he was from, but he was from Brazil playing soccer at my school. And he, me and him, he taught me how to do, he taught me jiu-jitsu for the first three years of my, you know, while I was wrestling. He was showing me jiu-jitsu and I was showing him wrestling. So he was doing IBJF tournaments in Brazil and, in, and like here. And it's like, 
And um, just looking back on that, it's pretty cool that like my come up was pretty crazy. But uh, you know, I had all these guys helping me out, and um, it's something I wanted to do forever. So when I made it in, I couldn't turn that down. But I was not ready. And when I got released, making it back was just you know, it's good. You know, I'm ready to go now, and I'm here. Does the wife still hold pads with? <laughs> no, she 100. percent I had one of my friends that t like tonight, like my childhood friend. I've known this guy since se second grade, and uh, he's never done you know striking more he's a police officer so it's like him just holding past for me like I just needed a target to hit I just need to like get that flow going and you know I'm I don't really need a lot I'm not super high made nits and um, I'm just here to fight so this ride has probably been special for them as well for the Hell wife yeah. for the friends watching you 100 be where you are now from when they used to hold pads and 100 percent you know and see where because it's a there. it really has been a um a group of people around me from day one I have some sponsors and um, you know, people back home that have been with me from Durant, Oklahoma, just been with me from, you know, from nothing, you know, like Scott Brown, Greg C, you know, all these, Mike Karen, all these guys, just, these are great guys that, you know, just grew up watching me wrestle and they love me wrestling. And then when I started fighting, they were huge fans. My dad, my mom, they're huge fans. So it's, uh, it's cool to see everybody come with me and every fight they come with me, no matter what happens, everybody's there. And, um, you know, my coach has been here since my third pro fight and I really didn't have anyone helping me out and he stepped in and I've been with him for last, you know, 20 something fights. That's awesome. Congrats on the victory. Yeah. Thank you.